Good evening. This is De Facto Review with me, Jargal Tampatarja. This week, I will highlight two events of last week happened in Mongolia. First, about public hearing on so-called call theft. Second topic is about Mongolians' new constituencies for next general election happening in the middle of next year. So two events. First about this public hearing. We say public hearing because this parliamentarian hearing is kind of a first tool that Mongolian parliament is using. And it, it was the first one was about development bank from bad loan issues, which was very fruitful in terms of knowing more about the governance in that bank. But unfortunately, not many people have responsibility, took responsibility or punished properly on, on that issue. Now, the second hearing is happening. It is consisting of two stages. First happened last week, a week before, and it was mostly about what is inside of the Gerdinus Tavantagwa, the largest state-owned uh, coal company of Mongolia, what was inside. The second part, which happened last five days, and very interesting five days. Interesting hearings really to know how the state-owned uh, company is run in Mongolia. The true picture, how miserable way it, it was run, not for the sake of public, but for the sake of a few, uh, few people who are close to decision-making of this corporation. Well, first observation. Five million tons of coke and coal went through without any customs declaration in processing. How it can be possible? Yes, it is possible in Mongolia. And uh, out of this five million without customs declaration, one million uh, tons belong to uh, a wife of a highly uh, ranking government agency. Another, the rest also, uh, our, some of the rest is also belong to the companies related to two parliament members, current parliament members. Mr. Acha and Mrs. Adyasurin both denied whatsoever connection with this, um, uh, this uh, theft uh, in spite of the uh, uh, public uh, registration show that how much they are related to uh, these two parliament members. And there are many other ex-parliament members as well. The second observation is uh, they have separated, one is a, one is a uh, production, then second is transportation, third is going through the border. So in this three field, looks like they have uh, already created a huge mafia structure in Mongolia. Now, without, otherwise, it, they, it's impossible to have this amount of coal illegally enter into China. Uh, but for example, take this uh, transportation. There is a so-called sea permission for uh, carrying of this coal by trucks, and this sea permission for the last six years uh, was given to 300,000 trucks and the fee to this state was around 7 billion MNT. But however, it was also misused and many, several, several public officers are now being charged for this crime of misusing their power. The third large issue was about sales of the coal. The whole thing started to be screwed from the time in uh, 28 to 2012. A period because it was a coalition government, both two leading political parties in Mongolia, People's Party and Democratic Party, each promised something big. One promise, uh, we will give each citizen one million to weeks, that time to weeks was of very um, more quality. Uh, and the other one, because of competition, they said that, oh, we will give one uh, $1,000 to each citizens. So they had to go some to do something and uh, because there was no money, not much uh, sales, but however, they have forced 
this, this call company to borrow money from Chinese company, Chow Call. They have borrowed $250 million first. Then as they, as they come in close to the next election in, 12, uh, in 2012, they have borrowed another 100 million US dollar. So every, this thing start from payment of this call to a Chinese company. And uh, it come to that level that uh, how entendre is consisting of two parts. An Eastern part, from the Eastern part, 80% of the production is supposed to go to Chalco to cover as soon as possible the, the payment. They did. And uh, as a result, it was uh, not a uh, very high price of what they call these, these 10 plus. So they had to, I mean, in short, they were mostly working for child coal to pay their own payment. Then production of coal was assigned to another uh, production company, Chinese company, GVVT. And uh, <clears throat> basically these two companies, uh, for these two companies, everything was run. So the very interesting issue is how price is uh, formulated in Taiwan, Taiwan. Unfortunately, it is again uh, uh, formulated or formed by the state order and the management was uh, adopted to that state, uh, state handbook. There, there is a certain handbook for setting prices and they did it and uh, the result was very terrible because at the um, sign, the call would cost 30 US dollar but at the border, it will be 70 US dollar. It became even worse. It, it decided it will be say $70, but at the border at times it was a 400 US dollar per ton. Why? Because uh, as the, as the competition goes between the trucks, they have probably they were transporting more trucks than they could go through the border. As a result, they have started new pile of coal at the border. Tahan had 20 kilometers from the border. They have been unloading all from the tracks of coal, then loading back, which is quite additional cost. And not only cost, because it was a, such a big pile of coal of the same quality from the same site. Uh, These people who were running these piles, tons of piles of our clothes, they were able to set a price. As a result, we had two prices set by this uh, five, six Chinese companies at the border in Saransat and in the Taiwan Padua. So as a result, 200 kilometers you go and it will cost 20 tons per ton. Then from there, they, through the border, it has a special connection with the border facilities, customs, etc. So the price was completely different. So it's a classical example how any government, when they do business, they do in such a way, like in Mongolia. And in the Mongolian case, even worse. So what else? Um, if it was on the 2000 tracks, it would be, if it is operated properly, then it will be, it could be enough. But instead, because instead of this 2000, now we have 20,000 trucks. And this truck belongs to many companies, many of them are related to politicians, which is getting that special permission C. And it turned out this transportation by trucks became very profitable business. So everybody almost was in. Uh, so with the price that government is uh, setting is uh, ridiculous, not uh, to the market rate. So as a result, this transportation production and the way how it is piled in this Tara had altogether created such a conditions for theft, which many used uh, very deeply. As a result, uh, Mongolian people have lost a bunch, part of uh, wealth, mineral wealth, to only some few people. So uh, it's very clear that it, they are mafia. And uh, these tracks were not, the, the owners of the tracks were not allowing to put any railways for the last 10, 20, 10 years. And finally, somehow, they made a tender, they made a railway, but without any tender, one particular company, Body International, which was never doing this kind of 
projects took the right and they made the railway all the way to the south border but uh, they made it uh, almost two and a half years ago and they have inaugurated all the surreal roads but there is no tongue is uh, of coal is transported because this road is not connected with china so it looks like there is no proper coordination with chinese and uh, now finally after three and a half years they they say that chinese company will do visibility study and they will connect these two railway lines finally then we don't know what will happen with trucks looks like this truck will be still will be transporting coal which is uh, also no good from environmental uh, concept in spite of all the situations uh, the board of uh, the town tabla irdines irdines town tabla company board found themselves very efficiently working in spite of all the situation and they have given a very large sum as a reward to themselves so that's what more or less became evidence as a result of this hearing in that sense it was very useful but now we know many things but we don't know what will happen afterwards whether the parliament will discuss it even they discuss it and then whether mongolian court system will work maybe they will not work as it, it is uh, it was a uh, case before so we have a huge uh, differences between this trying by the government by the parliament and by the court system in the country that's why mongolian people people of mongolia is becoming or remaining very frustrated and we will see what will happen in um, next week uh, the whole hearing series up should be discussed at the parliament if they will discuss it let's see so that's the first issue i want to share with you to give some lights just about what had happened in mongolia last week in that sense uh, the second topic i want to share is uh, which is also a very important topic for mongolian democracy because we will have general election in next year in the six months from now they have already set the date now it's june 28th and um, the, the mongolians living abroad would have also a chance to uh, vote and their vote received on june 20 to 23 for four days they will have because we have more than 200,000 mongolians abroad which is a more than every size of IMAC in Mongolia. So it's very important to have their voices in a general election. And this time the election will be held in new constituencies. Uh, we had before different system of uh, constituencies. Mongolia was one constituency or then it was by IMAX, it was once and then every time they change this uh, circle of uh, voters uh, in the territory race so uh, now this time it will be they, the parliament had discussed it for a whole week and finally they have made a resolution uh, to have 13 districts constituencies for election this 13 constituencies seven of them will be countryside in Ulaanbaatar will have, since Ulaanbaatar has a half of population, it will have a six districts. So uh, this, uh, the way how the countryside is divided also caused a lot of discussions in the country. Why? Because um, many IMAX have become now together, uh, but except the Ayyumudgi IMAX, which is mostly populated by Kazakh national, and the concern is uh is becoming like a separate zone though it is just one ima but on the other hand the concern is if it is connected with uh, or covered with another imax then there will be little chance for kazakh nationals to be elected that's why the rationale says that the the Bayungudge IMAC, the most western IMAC, mostly populated by kazakh people will have separate constituency 
So we have Arhangaya Bayung Hongor Uprhangaya, the Western Three Anaks, its first district of constituencies, but the Altnaid Zalkhang of Hobda, the second one, Bayung the third, Wolokan or Kupsuku Anax will be the fourth district, Tarhang Old Sling Hu Anak. Fifth, Thornod Sukhpatar Hinti Anax will be the sixth. Gobi Anax, Gobi Sumber, Thorn Gobi, Don Gobi, Un Gobi will be seventh district. And then Lambatar will have six districts. Payung Zurich district will have own constituency number eight. Payungol number nine. But Sukhpatar and Chingite districts are combined and it will be tenth district or constituencies. And then Sangin Hairhun will be alone, eleventh. Hangol, twelfth. Paranur, Barangai, Nalayah. These three remote districts will come, will be the thirteenth district. What does it mean? Mongolia will make also not only new constituencies for election for voters, but it will have also a new system according to new amendments to the constitutions. Mongolia, for the first time, from 76 seats in the parliament, we will have 128, 126 seats in the parliament. 78 of them will be by majoritarian system, and the 48 will be by proportional system, meaning that there will be 48 uh, candidates from one political, from each political party, and uh, who then whoever receives the largest amount of votes, all votes will be ranked. The largest amount will be, say, one party, one, say, 20 seats. Then they will have 20 uh, their members be elected. But before the election, the list of the, the any given party candidates will be clear and everybody will know. So at this time, uh, in order to have more gender uh, equality, uh, the new system suggests that it will be male, female, or I don't know, female, male, but it will be in that sequences so that we give more chance to female candidates uh, to be elected. So, very interesting uh, new system for the first time Mongolia is trying, and uh, for the first time we will have not 76, but now 48. Uh, from the political party, 78 from total uh, 126 parliament members we will have in Mongolia. So that's the final decisions of the parliament. So we will see in uh, six months from now, we will have a uh, new parliament members. Hopefully we will have more representatives of different political parties and all layers of the society representatives. That's the new system we have just set for election this year, and it happened last week. So I have introduced to you two events happened in Mongolia, and I shared my thoughts about the first about the public hearing on call, second about the new uh, constituencies for election happening in 2024. That's all for today, and thank you very much for watching. and. Uh, we will we will have uh, the next one next uh, review at the time when we will announce it, not next week. Thank you very much. Happy New Year.